Bastard Dogs, episode number four. Well, episode four, actually. So, this is the catch-up video following on from the bottling last week. Now, I have a bit of a surprise for you. I started bottling this last uh, Saturday evening, going into Sunday as well. And my mum rings me earlier today, and she goes, Hey, make sure you take out a bottle, and uh, just see how it is. And I'm like, but it's on your weekend. And she's like, no, take out a bottle and see how it is. So, this is what it's now looking like. As you can see, it's got a bit of a head, and when I cracked open the bottle top, it got tss, got carbonation out of it. I was actually really impressed. I actually really like the colour of it. Now, this even hasn't even been near a fridge yet. So I think I just took it straight out. No, it hasn't been near a fridge. And as you can see, like there is a nice bit of a head on it there as well, which is fantastic. Like the aroma is still like it's, it still has a little bit of a sweet smell to it going on. Definitely get the hops, and I can definitely get the uh, the whiskey oak going onto it. But what I'm really, really happy about is the bottom of it. Even looking at that, look, absolutely nothing in the bottom. No, nothing. I'm I'm stunned by that. But I was surprised that I got gas, and that I got ahead. And as you can see, look, the webbing on it in the glass is actually quite nice. So by the time this ages, I think this is actually going to be a really nice beer. And I'm actually really impressed by that too. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I learned while I was actually making this beer in terms of like the last part, the bottling part of it. And just sort of things that I'd learned overall so far. I mean, like I'm going to sit through the rest of this process. Um, but one of the things I thought was really important that I learned was the bottling side of it. It's messy. <laughs> it's wet. Uh... You you lose a, a f more beer as well than you already did, and I did the uh, the batch priming side of it, and more importantly, uh, the choice of bottles that you use to actually do your bottling as well is crucial. Like, your the wrong choice of bottle, especially if you're gonna reuse glass bottles from like uh, beers that you've consumed. Okay, so here's what I've learned so far. Okay, the worst, absolute worst bottles that I had to go and use to reuse were is I'm going to do this in like worst to best. So at number four, the worst bottle to try and clean and reuse was that from Independent Brewing. No matter what I did, I could not get the glue off the bottle after getting the label off. Hot water, tried lemon juice. I tried uh, vinegar. I tried, and I was just trying to break the, the glue, like the, the, hopefully the acids would break it. Tried steel wool could not get it off it at all um, no matter how hot I got the water as well couldn't get it just kept getting worse worse could not reuse the bottles at number three so we're getting into the middle part of it these were pretty bad so was uh, brew breweries I love Dar and Paddy in uh, brew brewery I love their beers I constantly am talking about them I've recommended them to a ton of people I've brought them a ton of new drinkers to their products as well. Guys I work with, or people who I'm friends with, who I've introduced their beers to, and they're now like consummate consumers. That's a great one, consummate consumers of their beers. And though their labels are horrible to get off the bottles, utterly, utterly horrible. And the backs are easy compared to the fronts. So whatever they have as part of the, uh, the glue, the type of label, and that uh, silver, that metallic silver that they have on the label as well, just makes it an absolute bastard to get off. Still wooling the crap out of it, like was the end way I had to go. But I mean, Jesus, I mean, burned through an awful lot of uh, steel wool trying to get their stuff off. Now, in terms of let's go to the two best, there was a whole heap of other ones in between that as well. Like I had a bottle of Jarl, that was particularly terrible. Galway Bay bottles I had a couple of them and they were horrible. The labels are crap and the amount of glue and shit they leave behind was just terrible. Um, the bow bristle ones uh, were actually pretty reasonable to come off as well, but they still were a pain in the ass. And these were all beers that I like as well. So let's get into the two best ones to actually try and remove the labels of. The best Irish beer that I had to get the labels off was in fact O'Hara's. Small bit of a soak in some hot water, nothing else in there, labels just floated right off and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of glue that was left on it that I was able to take off with uh, 
just a, just a little bit of elbow grease. That was it, and they came off very, very easy. Didn't actually have to go to using a scouring pad or anything like that came off very easy. I was really happy with that, so Harris did really well. So, uh, here's to you, Harris. Um, wow, that's even starting. Yeah, I like that. But the best of them all was Brewdog, hands down. Now, and I'll tell you why Brewdog was, was actually the best of a lot of them. I didn't have... Well, no, I tried this. I initially stuck the bottles in to soak as well and found they peeled off. No glue left on the bottle at all. I was then able to get the labels and re-stick them without any adhesive into a scrapbook. That's amazing. I was able to reuse our bottles with no, no gunkiness or anything like that left around the outside of the bottle. It was brilliant. That was fantastic. I was really, really happy with that. And, uh, you know, that made me very happy. And I, I like when things like that happen because they're good. Um, the So their bottles were really, really easy to use. And anyone, if you want to do, like, small, like, 330ml bottles, you don't do half-litre ones. If you've got a whole lot of brew dog bottles, they'll make your life so much easier. Um, the other, so getting into um, what you're gonna, what other things I learned off the back of this as well was... Um, when I was had initially, like I got the instructions. I didn't like go near anyone to go. Hey, how do I go and use my hydrometer? How do I use it? Like I haven't done any of this since I was like a, since I was a kid. Like my mom, my mom always knew what she was doing. So I was, I was trying to figure stuff out on my own and trying not to use the forums too much to go to. This is how you connect the dots. I wanted to see if I could organically try and connect the dots myself. And so. The hydrometer thing, yeah, eventually figured out what the heck that was, and my mum gave me a tip, you know, twisting it as well. And the house, and then the explanation of the hydrometer. So, like, I'm going to share what I know with you guys, so you can understand this. Again, if you want to think about brewing, these are things you want to learn. Let's start with this. Let's start with hydrometer 101. So, hydrometer 101. What is the purpose of a hydrometer? A hydrometer works in the, almost the same kind of fashion as a the thermometer. It's there to measure... And what it's there to measure is gravity. And in terms of gravity, what it's looking at is the amount of sugars that are actually there and present. So that will help you understand what your alcohol level is. Here's how this works. On a hydrometer as it stands, you're going to have a series of numbers going down the scale. They're going to be starting at, you'll see there's a line for like 1.000. Now this is when you put it into your, um, your gravity vessel to go and check or your... There'll be almost like a long test tube type thing that you'll put it into, okay? When you put pure water in there and you fill it up, you'll actually see that like water has a gravity of 1.000. That's what water has. So as an experiment, if you start adding teaspoons of sugar into it, you'll actually see that the hydrometer will actually start lifting up out of the water. And the reason being is because all the solids that are in there are starting to suspend it. The best way to do an, equ an equivalency of this is if you take a boat and you put it in a freshwater lake, okay, so it's just pure water, probably got a pH level of around 7, so or maybe above or a little bit below in terms of acidity or alkaline. Uh, the boat will have a certain level in the water, and if you were to take a marker and mark it along the side of the boat, you'd actually see that the level that it sits in the water. You take that exact same boat with the exact same weight and everything else. And you take it out of the freshwater lake and you put it into seawater. What you'll actually find is that the boat will actually be sitting that little bit higher. And the reason being is all the solids that are actually in the water, in terms of like the salts and everything else, are actually causing the boat to sit up a little bit higher in the water. And that's because the solids in there also have mass. It's about displacement. So if the hydrometer itself, while it has a weight in it and everything else, what it does is depending on like pure water, so there's no, in terms of like absolute solids that's in natural water, pH of 7, uh, give or take like maybe 0.1 either side or 0.2 either side, um, that is going to have very, very little solids in there, or solubles that actually comprise the mass of that water. When you're talking about adding sugars in, they'll cause it to go up and rise up out of it. So how do you arrive at your gravity and how do you establish what your alcohol level is? So here's the trick with this that I've learned. Again, I'm sharing what I know with you so you guys will benefit from this. So what happens is, once you've got your wort done, before you pitch your yeast is the point at which you take your hydrometer vessel, put the hydrometer in it, siphon off some beer using a sanitized uh, jug or whatever it is you want to do, and pour it in until it's maybe, until you actually start to see it rise. So it's probably be about 
maybe an inch, maybe two inches, inch and a half from the top of the vessel. And you'll actually see that the hydrometer will lift up and rise and it'll give you your initial reading. That is what's known as your original gravity. So you'll make a note of that, that'll be like whatever it is, maybe it's 1.06, maybe it's 1.04, whatever it is. Make a note of what it is, write it down. There's a whole heap of other things on a hydrometer that are not really applicable to people making beer. They're very, very applicable to people doing wine or a whole heap of other things. Um, it, you could, it's quite rudimentary for what you need it for beer anyway. So you'll make a note of that, okay? As your beer progresses through its phase one fermentation, so it's in your, uh, it's in your bucket. It's covered, it's a bucket. In its bucket, and then when it gets to the end of its fermentation, before you go and bottle it, what you're going to do then is that you're going to pick up what's known as your final gravity. So the yeast has consumed all the sugars that it can at this point. So it's full. It's like you. Imagine you've just ordered like a monster pizza from Mazzoni and you're sitting on the couch and you're like, oh, can't eat anymore. That's the point to which your yeast is at. So now it's just gotten lazy. It's starting to go to sleep. It's not, it's not doing any more work at this point. So it's not starting to convert anymore. And that's when you are going to go and get your, your final gravity check. So again, you're going to do the same thing. Fill up the hydrometer vessel and see where it is. And it should be as close to 1 as possible. Now, you'll see readings on your hydrometer that goes to like uh, 0.9. This goes into higher gravity things. So when you're talking about like double IPAs, they should be going into it for like higher uh, alcohol levels, which should be like a 7% and, and, and above like wine. So that's why hydrometers are useful for wine, especially when they go into like... 9.99 that's when you're starting to get into like the higher alcohol levels and this is the formula that you're actually going to use to figure out what your ABV of your beer is likely to be give or take so what you're going to have is you're going to have your final gravity or your original gravity minus your final gravity and then you're going to take that figure and you're going to multiply it by 131.25 that will give you your ABV okay and you can see that's just written below there as well so that tells you what your alcohol level is going to be and that's how you figure out what your ABV is. That's like the easy version of it. Okay. Now the other thing that I learned as a result out of this was how you actually read what your gravity is off your hydrometer. Now I'm going to use this as an example. You're looking at this and you're thinking that the top of it is, if you look down at the top of it and people try to read their hydrometer like this, they look down at the top of it and they try to read it off this. The simple fact of the matter is, if you look at the bottom of this glass, like this is what actually happens when you're reading hydrometer. Imagine this upside down, so you're going to have to like, use your imagination here. Terrible thing to have to do, but what happens is there is an actual arch that starts to happen naturally. This actually happens in the top, and it's because of the meniscus, which is almost like this little disc surface that you see in the top of a liquid. Okay, so what happens is when you're looking down at the top, you're not actually getting the true reading, so you actually have to look at it almost side on. And just look at just below the meniscus level. What it is. Now this is stuff that you usually learn when you're doing science in like your first year, second year, third year of your... Actually no, it's first year science in Irish uh, secondary schools. You learn this. This is how you actually go and read what a liquid looks like when it's in a vessel. And you're trying to do a reading of how much liquid is in the vessel. And it's, you, you're taught to actually look just below the meniscus. Because the meniscus itself actually like, gives you a bit of a false reading. And it's important when you're trying to figure out what your gravity is. So that's why it's really important that you get that right. So that's the other thing I really wanted to share with you as well. Um, I'm really happy with like everything as it's gone so far. The bottling was a pain in the ass. Like I said, I got a lot of beer all over the place. There was a couple of times when I had my siphon and I forgot to move the tap and just pissed out of the fucking thing. I was just lucky I had like towels on the floor. Otherwise the place stank. I mean, at the end of it, the entire thing, I, I smelled like I actually jumped in a vat of beer, rolled around in it and sat there for a while. I stank a beer. Um, and I didn't want to have a beer afterwards as a result. I was like, Jesus, this is horrible. So the next phase I'm sitting through is this whole thing of like, fuck off and wait. And this was my mum's thing. And she's actually said to me like, hey, you know, the next thing you need to do is next week, on the same day do the same thing again take like for the next four weeks take a beer each week out let it sit out for a bit crack it open and just make a note of how it's progressing in terms of what you're tasting what you're seeing and so on so you'll see how things are going and it's something that i'm gonna have to do um planning is already underway for the stout i'll talk about that in the next video uh, i might do another update video just to see how uh, this goes if you have any tips or anything else you want to share at this point you can share them below down in the comment section. I want to thank everyone who's checked out the series so far and given me the support and sent in suggestions and kind words. It's been great. Remember to rate, review and thumbs up. Thanks again.